Well, now that we've had a brief look at some of the aspects that need to occur within the preliminary phase, let's drop down into the, the spin of the wheel, which, and really the first phase of that is the architecture vision. All right, so let's elaborate a little further on the architecture vision phase uh, as, you, as we spin through the wheel. Now, the architecture vision is really the starting point of each iteration, in other words, each spin of that wheel. In that architecture vision phase, what you're looking at to develop is, is, well, first you're trying to understand the requirements of the organization. And if those requirements, and document them, if those requirements don't exist, right, the point is, is to extract them. If they do exist, the point is, is to model them. Right? So those are sort of the two angles that you've got to pursue within the architecture vision phase. Now, the output of this phase is really what you have is you have an architecture vision document. Right? And I'm just going to abbreviate this here. Now, that architecture vision document drives out what the organization is looking to achieve through this particular iteration uh, of architecture. And when you eventually have a clarity on that vision, you, you document it in what's referred to as a statement of architecture work. Right? And let's take a quick look at the breakdown of this. So the architecture vision really looks at, okay, what are the strategies? Right? So what's the strategy of the organization? What am I trying to do through this iteration? What am I trying to achieve? It then takes a very light touch at the business domains, and you'll re we'll refer to this concept quite a lot called BDAT, which is Business Data Application and Technology. In other words, well, in order to achieve that strategy, what is, the, what is my initial perception of what business data application technology pieces need to be assembled to achieve that strategy? It then also looks at uh, readiness or change readiness. In other words, how ready is the business to accept some of these changes? Um, and are we biting off more than we can chew with a kind of boil, boil the ocean approach? And then finally as well, it also looks at stakeholders. And in other words, well, who are my stakeholders within this particular scope? And it wraps all of these, this research up into an architecture vision. Now this vision document is what these stakeholders have to sign off. They have to have an agreement of, ah, that's what we're getting for our money. Right? Speaking of money, that takes you to the statement of architecture work. And what we have coming out of here is your traditional time and, your tr and cost and effort. And really, this is almost a, a project management discipline within the architecture space. It looks at how much is it going to cost right, for our stakeholders um, to effectively deliver the, uh, on this vision uh, at a project level. And that's really the document that they sign off. And that becomes one of your first contracts within the architecture discipline. So one of the sort of key inputs that you want to get within your architecture vision is, is a view of what we refer to as business motivation. And, uh, what we use as an interesting way to capture business motivation is the business motivation model, the means to an end chain. And it's important that you have an understanding of these concepts because really right up at the top level is where fragmentation begins because uh, strategic thinkers don't actually understand the definitions for some of these assets. So really it starts this way. All right, so what we have over here is we have the means. All right, when I refer to the means to an end chain and the end. All right, so in other words, how do I achieve that end? Well, these are all the various means that I use. So in the traditional landscape, we'll have something called a vision. Right? What is a vision that I'm seeking to achieve? Not to be confused with the architecture vision. This is the vision of the business. And you know, in all the management schools, you understand what that, how do I achieve that, that vision? Well, I achieve it through a mission. Now, the way the means to an end chain works is this actually decomposes even further. So coming out of the vision, I have a series of goals. Right? And coming out of the goals, I break that down into a series of objectives. Right. Well, how do I achieve my goals? Well, same story. In order to achieve my goals, I have a series of strategies, plural. Right. And those are the sort of building blocks of how I achieve my goals. Right. Right. And then that decomposes even further. How do I achieve my objectives? Well, you achieve your objectives through a series of tactics. Now, all of this is interconnected. Right. You basically have your vision decomposes that way. Right, and your mission decomposes that way. And this is a very, very good model to base your uh, understanding of those strategic objects. Um, and and we, we often refer to that as a meta model. And it links all of these pieces together. And when you talk to your strategic office or, or your business people, this is a good model for them to center on as you begin to extract some of that information from them. And as, pa as part of the assets, we, uh, we, we've got a, an example which shows you what a documented business motivation model could look like. But as part of an exercise, why don't you drop down into the forum and just have a discussion around how you would yourselves document a business motivation model? What's been your experience around documenting uh, the motivation of an organization and how you've taken some of those pieces forward um, within your respective businesses? Now remember, within the context of the architecture vision phase, because I'm dealing with all of my domains, business data application technology, I need to be able to link this business motivation model to the business aspects. And really, this is where 
concepts like your capability model come into play. So what you can do here is this actually begins to help you identify the series of capabilities that you need. So your capabilities sit down here. And if you recall, uh, in the previous module, we defined what a capability was. It was a combination of people, process, tools, information to drive out an outcome. Well, the tactics are giving you an idea of, well, what do I need to do to change capabilities or what those capabilities might be? And in actual fact, well, what's the outcome that I need to achieve? Well, there's your outcome. It's documented as your objectives. Well, why the objective as opposed to goals? Well, we normally choose the objectives because objectives, objectives have to be smart. And we'll introduce that in a little detail in a later module. But when we say smart, we, we mean specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-based. And when we're talking outcome of a capability, it's good to have that level of granularity and accuracy because those are the outcomes you're trying to achieve. Those are actionable, they're measurable, and that's how you're going to determine the improvement of your capability. So you can kind of see how this can now begin to drop down into what you need to do on certain capabilities and what the actual outcomes of those capabilities must, um, the changes those capabilities must achieve uh, and, and align those to your objectives.